Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing out there? You know, we're, we're here to remember and celebrate how good our God is. And today we're going to be talking about, in these next few moments, about this exact song. The title of this message is going to be, A Good, Good Father. We've been on a series that God is good, but we're going to go into our relationship with God. Some of us have a hard time with a relationship with God because we don't know who he is or maybe I've heard a thousand stories of what they tell me he's like but I like to know him by my on my own I, I want to have an encounter myself with God I want to have a relationship with God and then the scripture I mean that song was saying that when I when I hear what he says you know what you hear encouraging words I'm pleased with you I love you you'll never be alone you have a father not like your earthly father. And I know we're going to make that, we're going to make that leap right now from our experience with our earthly fathers. And we're going to tie in a relationship with a good, good father. And I don't want your relationships with your earthly fathers to, to taint your relationship with your good, good father. Because our good, good father is a perfect father. And every single one of us were created to have a relationship with him. And until that happens, there's going to be an emptiness in your heart. So we're going to pray right now. We're going to get ready for the word. I'm so proud of every one of you being here online and also here in the house of God. Let's today spend some time getting to know our father better. How can you love someone you really don't know? So by the end of this sermon, I'm going to introduce you throughout this sermon. I'm going to introduce you to God himself as your father. And by the time you're done, you'll be able to pray like Jesus says, our Father, and get a little better understanding of what that means. I want you to not just know about God. I want you to eventually love God. God loves you, but I want you to get to a point where you can say, I love you, Father. Oh, that'd be great, great place to be. Now, when you learn how to love your Father in heaven, there's nothing else that can replace that relationship with your Father in heaven. Most of us don't have a temptation problem. You think, oh, I just keep tempting and falling. This is an issue. You just don't know God good enough. And when you get to know him better, you're going to be able to say, nah, I know you're offering something that sounds really tempting, but I get that from my father already. So I'm going to be able to say, no, I love God, my father, more than I love my own pleasures and things that are trying to tempt me. I don't need that anymore. I found something that's more fulfilling, and that's my relationship with my father. We always say this, we are not offering your religion. We are offering your relationship with your creator. And I, I just, I pray that today, somehow you get a realization of how good, good God is or we have a good, good Father. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we come together to study your word. And when we're studying your word, we are learning who you are. Your word is a letter to us. You want to know me? Study my word. So I just thank you, Lord, that we'll not get a thousand prescriptions of who you are from social media from people's opinions but we'll get to know God our father ourselves today there's different people in different places there are those that don't know you at all in this room but you know them and you love them there are those that we know you but we need to get to know you better and there's another group that are just totally in love with you already and their relationships is going to grow today even more have your way today and we pray this in Jesus name we pray Amen. You may be seated. So glad again to see every one of you here. And we've been on a series that God is good. And this would be our last sermon teaching on this series. Um, and today we're going to be talking about God is a good, good father. And we're going to get our teaching from James chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And what stood out to me in this portion of scripture where it said, God, our father. Let's take a look at the scripture. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. This portion of scripture is saying, don't be misled about what? About who God is. Don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived and get a false image of who God is. Dear brothers and sisters, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights 
in the heavens. And this scripture is just saying something real simple, that God is a source of good. Anything that's good, that's pleasant, that's excellent, that's beneficial, that's, that's joyful, leads to peace and happiness, freedom comes from God. And last week we covered that bad does not come from God. Bad comes from two places. Our own wrong decisions lead to bad results. And also there's actually an enemy or an adversary, the devil, that's out to kill, steal, and destroy. So we got to be careful that we're not blaming God for the bad. Because if we start blaming God for the bad in our lives, this is what we're doing. We're eliminating our answer. God is not your problem. He is your solution. So everything that's good comes from God our Father. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all his creation, became his prized possession. What he's saying, after all the things I created, you're the center of my creation. God that created the heavens and the earth, he created all of it to have a relationship with you. And until you have that relationship with him, something is missing. You know what we call that? An identity crisis. And every one of us are looking for where do we fit in? What is my identity? Who am I? And this is the greatest identity you could ever have. If you could just discover this, I'm a child of God. Say it with me, I'm a child of God. And until that becomes a reality in your life, you're going to be searching for your lineage. You know, Lisa, Lisa, my wife, um, she was born and she was, when she was born, she was adopted, um, uh, uh, she was set up for adoption immediately. So Lisa, I remember when we first met her, when I first met her, I asked her, what nationality are you? And she would say, I'm French, Italian, and Cherokee. I go, okay, and she goes, and I think she meant, she was saying mostly Cherokee. I don't know where she got that from, but somehow someone told her that. So it, later on, I would say maybe, uh, uh, I mean, I, it's really later on, 25 years into our marriage, I go, why don't we do one of those DNA tests? Because I, I, I got, a, I got and, and when Lisa would just, just get a little stubborn, I go, that's the Cherokee in you. There it is right there, you little stubborn Cherokee, right? She get fired up. I go, there's the Italian in you. So we did this DNA test because Lisa does not know her true identity. Until we get this DNA, it's all hearsay. So we, we get the reports back and we find out she's not French at all. She's not Italian at all. There's zero Cherokee in her bloodline. And we found out she's like 90 something percent English, British. I go, no wonder. Let's get it. I go, baby, you're white. That's what you are. You're white. But until we took that DNA, DNA test, we didn't know who she was. And a lot of us right now, you think you're something that you're really not. You think you're a loser. You think you're a drug addict. You think you're a failure. You think you're depressed. All these things that people told you you are, you're still struggling with your identity and you're searching out there, where do I fit in? And today, I'm going to give you your, your DNA test. We don't have to go through DNA.com. Right now, we're going to get your DNA from the Word of God. God created you and I to be His children. And you have a Father that's all-powerful, almighty, and He loves you unconditionally. And until you find that out, you're going to be searching. Everyone's looking for your identity. Your identity is not your desire. Your identity is who you're created to be. I am, and you start saying, you know, most people find their identity in their lust. I am this because I lust after that. But we have our Father. Someone say, our Father. So God created us. This is a major point I want to make. God created us to have a relationship with Him as our loving Father. God wants to not just be a Father. He wants to be your loving Father. Maybe you have a struggle with that because when I grew up, I had a father um, and my blood, my biological father that wasn't so loving. He loved himself. He loved his partying. He loved his lifestyle. And he chose that over his family. 
And the more selfish we become and the more we make our desires, our sinful desires, our selfish desires, our identity, this is what happens. You start leaving your assignment. So my dad left his assignment to be a loving father. So if, you, if I'm trying to get my reference point of a good father from my father, uh, biological father on earth, I don't have it. But just because I didn't have a reference with my biological father on earth doesn't mean I can't find my identity. My identity is not my, in my biological father. My identity is in my heavenly father. I want to introduce you to your creator that loves you. So God created us to have a relationship with him as a loving father. Jesus taught us to pray by addressing God as our father. Father is a relationship word. God desires to have a loving relationship with us by being our father. In Matthew 8, 6, 9, it says this. Matthew 6, 9 says, Jesus said, pray like this. Our father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. He says, when you address God, you could address him as anything, but this is how you're supposed to address them as your father in heaven. See, and until you learn how to, until you have that father, son, or father, daughter relationship, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be an emptiness within us. We're going to be searching. Where do I, who am I? You are a child of God. God loves you. You are not a mistake. You got to know this. That word father, our father, is a, a Hebrew word, patir. And it says, it means nourisher. A good father is a nourisher. He's an encourager, or it means a protector. When you're a good father, you're a protector. I remember there was a night in our house, and, and, and it was late at night. Someone was knocking on our door, like trying to break into our house. Now, when they were trying to break into my house, my girls, I got five girls and a wife. They called me. Like, you go answer that door. So I, okay. I got to be a good father. I'm not going to send my wife to go fight that guy. Could it be that some of you guys are actually fighting spiritual battles and you're sending your wife to fight your battles instead of you standing up as a spiritual leader of your own home? See, the problem to get to my family, you're going to have to go through me. Say, Pastor, I mean, you, are you that bad? I, I, I'll tell you what, I know my position. I'm a protector. I'm a die protector. But I'll tell you this, you're not going to get to my wife and my kids and my house through that front door without a fight on your hands. A good father is a protector. He doesn't open up his family to danger. He protects his family from danger. Come on. God is raising up some good fathers in this place as they follow the good father. So they knocked on my door. And that guy was knocking. I looked through the people. And the guy's crazy. Like someone, it, it was somebody that was strung out on drugs full of demons spitting on the, on the front porch. So this is what I did. I got my bat. I lowered my voice a little bit. Hey! You don't want none of this! Because if you get through this door, you're going to have a beating in the name of Jesus. The idea is a good father is a protector. And when God is saying, I'm a good, good father, I'm your protector. You don't need to fight. Come on. You don't need to fight this battle. I'll fight it for you. I'll defend you. I'll protect you. Come on. I got your back. Aren't you glad you got a God that has your back? Father means provider. Someone say provider. I love that. Why, why are you all worried when you got a God that's rich? My little daughter, um, one of my daughters, I'm Marisa. She don't have a worry in the world. She was in some special needs classes when she was in school. And she lives with us. She has her own room. 
Yesterday, she goes, Dad, I'm going to Disneyland. And I need some money. She doesn't know what a big, she don't know how much money, I just needed enough money to do what I want to do. That's what she told me. I go, how much is that? She goes, $50. She thinks $50 is a lot of money. I go, that's not enough. She goes, more? A thousand? That's like a conversation. No, not a thousand either. I go, how about a hundred? She goes, okay, let's do that. So she comes up to me and says, Daddy, and she brings me her wallet. It's empty. That was last night. I need to fill this with that hundred. Where is it? So I gave her 20. I gave her 40. I gave her 60. And she, I go, is that a hundred? She goes, I don't know. Is that a hundred? I go, count it. She goes, 20, 40, 60. No, you still need to give me more. And I gave her another 20. He goes, 80. I go, is that 100? She goes, not 100 yet. You have to give me some more. And I gave her the other. I gave her the 20. It was 100. I'm going to tell you this. My daughter is not tripping. She just knows that she has a dad that's a provider. You know why some of you guys are all worried? You don't know. You don't have a father that's a provider. And you're still thinking that you got to do it. And God says, why don't you let me provide? We serve a God. Good, good father that takes care of his children. Do we have a, do we have a picture of this bill? I don't know if you guys still have. There was, a, there was a time in this church, we're building this church. I don't know if they have the picture of that bill. Let's see if they got, oh, here it is. What needs to be paid? This was like five years ago. We have no money in the bank. We're building a church. We had a, we had a, we had a, a truck drop off two truckloads worth of drywall and we didn't have the money to pay for it. And I remember I, go, I, I talked to one of our leaders. I go, um, write down what we owed this week. I know we don't have no money. Let's just write it down. It was $265,813. See, if you don't know who your loving father is, you get freaked out. So, so I remember Susie, we have this meeting. She goes, um, uh, uh, how are we going to pay that? I go, that's none of my business. I said, Zach, why? She goes, me, what's none of your business? It's not my problem. This is God's project. We need a miracle. We better go talk to our provider. Well, you know what happened? Within that week, that money came in. We didn't miss a beat. Somehow it came in. It was more money than we ever had come in because we serve a God. Come on. When he gives you a vision and he gives you an assignment, he gives you the provision. You know why you're freaked out? You're trusting too much in you. Your ability is not enough for the dream that God has put in you. Someone said, God's my provider. Let me see, he's a teacher too. Teacher, parent. A good father is a teacher, parent. It also means this, one who has infused his own spirit into his children. So when God says, I'm your father, I want you to get this. He's not your father until you've been infused with his spirit. Why does he infuse his children with his spirit? Because when he infuses you with his spirit, he infuses you with his DNA. So you could be like him. You could walk in his power. You can walk in his wisdom. You can have conversation with him. You can know him. So what he does, he infuses his spirit in you so you can have a deep, intimate relationship with him. God is no longer out there. He's now in here. Oh man, religion can infuse the spirit of God in you, but a relationship with God begins when God's spirit moves in to your life and transforms you from the inside out. I'm not here to change your behavior. I'm here to change your whole being. That means I want you to become a person that God is living inside of you. I'm so close to God. He's in me. He's my father. I know him. Some of you guys are freaking out right now. I said, Pastor, I don't know God like that. Why don't we just start today? Open up your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my life. 
Fill me with your spirit. Make me into a new person. I want to know how good you are. I'm tired of hearing it by her hearsay. I want to know you personally. How are you going to sell a God you don't know? Infused with the Spirit. This describes a relationship of those who through faith in Christ have been united in a especially close relationship with God and who no longer fear judgment for their sin but honor Him as their reconciled and loving Father. See, before you come to God, you see God as a judge. Once you come to Jesus and he forgives you of your sins and he fills you with his spirit, you see him as your father, not a threat. I love it. So Jesus taught us to pray by addressing God as our father. Someone say, our father. Say the great name, our father. Oh, I, will, I pray that you'll get one day and say, father, I love you. Man, I love you more than anything. Man, you, you're, you teach me. You provide for me. You're my, you're my protector. You're my nourisher. I get everything from God. Jesus, I love you. Number two, I'm, I'm describing this one. God the Father loves us so much. Check this out. We're, we're making a point here is that God created us to have a relationship with him as a loving father. But God the Father loves us so much that he calls us his children. This is the most endearing word he could use to describe his desired relationship with us. It is more intimate than being called his servants, his friends, his people. He calls us his children. There isn't a greater name to be called by God than his child. A child comes from the father. He has the father's DNA and qualifies for the full inheritance. He goes, as soon as I call you my son, everything that's mine becomes available to you. I love it. Say it with me. I'm a child of God. And if you're not there yet, by the time we're done, I pray that you become a child of God and you have a father in heaven. Not a religion. Do you know God? Well, yeah, I go to the Catholic church. That doesn't say you have a relationship with God. That just say what church you go to. I'm not talking about relationship with an organization or relationship with a religion. I'm talking about having a relationship with a father. Yeah, I know God. I love him. His spirit lives in me. I know him. He nourishes me. He protects me. He got my back. He's my teacher. I don't fear nothing. Because if God's for me, who's going to come against me? See, when the devil comes knocking on my door, Jesus answers. Like what? What you got to do in this house? Oh, excuse me. I thought Marco was going to answer. Yeah, I, I answer. This is my house. Come on, someone praise God. I want to introduce you to your loving father that has your back. In 1 John 3, 1 says this. See how very much our father loves us? For he calls us his children. He's saying, you know how much I love you? I'm going to tell you what I call you. I call you my child. He don't, call, he don't call you a failure. He don't call you a sinner. He don't call you a basket case. He don't call you a backslider. He calls you by your relationship. That's my son. That's my daughter. But, but they, got, they got issues. I know they got issues, but that don't change anything. They're still my son. They're still my daughter. And, and hi, what are you going to do to change that? Come on, does anybody want to become a child of God? I'm tired of living in a fickle environment that people like me based on my performance. I want to have a relationship with someone that loves me unconditionally and is for me. No matter when I mess up, he can say, son, get up. Start acting like your father. I didn't put my spirit in you to leave you barely making it, surviving. I put my spirit in you so you could be more than a conqueror, prosperous, powerful. Come on, son, get up. Woo. And that is what we are. Look at this. See how very much our father loves us? 
for he calls us his children. What did he call us? What? And that's what we are. That's who I am. I'm a child of God. I am not my last failure. I am not a sinner. I am not an addict. I am not bipolar. I am not depressed. I, I am not fearful. I am not abused. I am not rejected. I am not unworthy. I am not a drunk. I am not a bad father. I'm a child of God. That's right. God called me his child and that's what I am. So I'm going to resist every spirit, every mindset that tries to come against my spiritual identity. I'm a child of God. Someone say, get this in your spirit. I'm not fatherless. I got a daddy. I'm not an orphan. I got a father. And he's the best father there ever has been. Do you remember back in the day, day? Some of you guys that had a father living in your house, you thought your dad was the baddest man alive. Some of you guys. Said so someone messed you, you said, look, bro, don't mess with me. My dad will kill you. My dad could beat up everybody. The other day, my daughter still think this a lot. My 18-year-old came up to me and said, Dad, I went to the gym yesterday. This is this week, this story. I went to the gym. Then people were surprised. I was just curling. So the guys were like, uh, he, she, I was curling almost the same number as the guys. <sighs> and then she said, she said, she, uh, she, uh, she said, um, Daddy, we got our, our strength from you. I go, that's right, we're naturally strong. <laughs> and then Lisa says, I'm strong too. There was a day when I was 12 years old, I was picking up a whole log, and, and, and people were just amazed. <laughs> that was exactly what happened. And, and the kids just started laughing. Ah, oh, mama, you're not that strong. We get our strength from Daddy. You know why some of you right now don't think you're strong? You're getting your strength from the wrong place. You should be getting your strength from your daddy. Come on, you should be getting, come on. You should be identifying with his strengths, not your weaknesses. I love it. But the people, look at, but the people who do, long, look, check this out. Check, check it, check it, check it, check it, boop, boop. But the people who belong to this world, Wait a second. Uh uh, wait a second. We just got introduced to another group. So, you mean that there's a group that God is not their father? There's another group that belong to the world. They don't belong to God. They don't have the, they don't have the good, good father? Uh oh. There's another group, and I want you to understand this. There's only two spiritual fathers that are available. The good, good father or the bad, bad father? I served the good, good father. I used to serve the bad, bad father. And that bad, bad, bad father was bad. But let's, we'll discuss that in a second. But, but the people who belong to this world, they belong to what? They don't belong to God, their father. Don't recognize that we are God's children. Back in the day, like in the 90s, you'd say something like this. You better recognize. That he said, better, better recognize who you're talking to. But, with the, but the scripture is saying that the people that belong to this world, they don't recognize something really great about you. You're a child of God. They try to minimize that because they don't understand the power and authority that you're connected with. They're misjudging you. You know why they better recognize? Because you're a source of breakthrough. You're a source of healing. You're a source of eternal life. Come on, the, 
the God that's in you, the resurrection power that's in you is the answer to their every single problem and their identity. So you better recognize I'm a child of God. I'm connected to everything you need. I'm not saying walk in pride, but you got to walk in some dignity. Walk in some confidence. I know who my father is. I know him really good, and I'm getting to know him every better, and every, every day better, and every day I get to know him, he's gooder and gooder. I know that ain't proper English for English teacher. Oh my gosh, I just get him for my nerves. So it's just like you fingernails on a chalkboard, what he just did. Improper English. <laughs> I'm just teasing, that's why I said that. I want to get on your nerves. No, I was kidding. But the people who belong to the, this world don't recognize we are God's children because they don't know him. So if there's a group that don't know him, they're not only not children of God, the problem is they don't even recognize we are children of God. And the reason they can't see it because they don't know him. Hmm, let's think about that. See, those that belong to this world have a different father. Man, I just got into the intro today. This is sad. I thought this was the last sermon. I don't know what's going on here. But how I many know we serve a good, good father? We're gonna, I'm going to have to do part four next week. I got to hit. This is intro stuff. Look at Rome, John 8, 44 says this. For you are the children of your father, the devil. Yeah? Yo soy un hijo del padre, el diablo. <laughs> I'm practicing my Spanish for Barack concert. You are, imagine Jesus saying that. Imagine you having a conversation with Jesus. He goes, you are a son. You go, you got it? Of the devil. And imagine this saying, your daddy is the devil. Well, how do you know if your daddy's the devil? Now, this is really important because if you got a bad, bad daddy, God's offering you a good, good daddy. Thank God you don't have to stay under the authority of that bad, bad daddy. I love it. For you are the, uh, you are the children of your father, the devil. How do you know? And you love to do the evil things he does. So how do you know that you are of the, your devil, the devil's your daddy? You love doing what he does. You love talking the way he talks. You love lusting the way he lusts. You like being angry the way he's angry. You love being revengeful the way he is. You love the things that Satan loves. Hmm. Got quiet right there. I was like, oh, hallelujah. What? what? <laughs> he was a murderer from the beginning. And you know what that means? He was a hater from the beginning. And how do you know that the devil's your daddy? Your heart's full of hate and anger. He has always hated the truth. How do you know the devil's your daddy? You don't like God. You don't like the word. You don't like truth. You don't like church. You don't like God's people. This is a burden to you. Ooh, wait. Because there's no truth in him. Because when there's not truth in you, there's no desire for truth. But once you start living by truth and you see the breakthrough of truth, you see the freedom of truth, you see the peace of truth, you see the joy of truth, you see the confidence of truth, you see the purpose of truth, you start loving truth. Even if it hurts, tell me the truth. I don't want to live a lie. I don't want to live depressed. I don't want to live in poverty. I don't want to live as a loser. I don't want to live not knowing what my future holds for me. Tell me the truth, even if it hurts for a little bit. Does anybody love the truth? When, when he lies, who lies? When the devil lies, he's consistent with his, with his character. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. He's a liar. So how do you know the devil's your daddy? You lie all the time. It's not that you once in a while lie. Lying is a lifestyle. Sin is a lifestyle. 
Sexual morality is a lifestyle, yo. You know what he was telling? He was talking to a group of people that thought God was their father. You know what's crazy about this? You could think God's your father and the devil be your daddy. And the devil's like a pedophile. This is what he does. He parks his white van in front of the school. He might even get some music that sounds like the ice cream man. And he's offering candy. But once you take the candy, his plan begins to unfold because he has no good intention for you. He's going to rape you. He's going to abuse you. And maybe at the end, he's going to kill you. See, and when you're serving the devil, you're addicted to the candy. But he's going to rape you. He's going to abuse you. And he's going to kill you. You cannot serve the bad, bad daddy and end up with good, good results. You serve the bad daddy, you get in that van, and you get addicted to the candy. I know it tastes good for a minute, but at the end, it's going to separate you from God. It's going to separate you from joy. It's going to separate you from your family. It's going to separate you from your dreams. It's going to separate you from your future. It's going to separate you from your dignity. It's going to separate you from your kids. It's going to separate you from your marriage. It's going to separate you from your church. And at the end, your life will be a living hell, and it will end in hell forever if you serve the bad daddy. But I thank God there's an option. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your name is more holy and more important than any other name. Because it's through your name that I'm saved. It's through my identity with you that I get delivered. It's through my identity with you I fulfill my purpose. I've been looking for peace. Well, you know I'm the prince of peace. I've been looking for healing from my heart. Do you know I not know that I healed the brokenhearted? I've been looking for service to provide, to, to prosper. Don't you know that I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory? Oh, I need some direction. Don't you know that I'm a God that will counsel you and guide you? I'll give you my Holy Spirit. You know what we need? We don't need to fix the people in our lives. Forget that. We need to restore our relationship with our Father. How many know God is a good God? How many know God's a good? Someone say God is good. He's a good, good Father. Oh man, we just end it right there because woo. next week is gonna get good. The good thing about it, I don't have to study for next week. I already got it. <laughs> next week, we're going to cover. How do we know that our Father in heaven is good? How do we know that? And then we're going to dis discover this. How do we enter into a relationship with our Father in heaven? It's going to be good, I'm telling you. So we're going to learn, how, how do we know God is good? Well, we're going to find that out next week. Well, how do I enter into that relationship? We're going to cover that this week. But we'll cover it this week as well. Let's all stand up. Someone say, God is good! All the time. All the time. God is good. We serve a good, good father. Someone say, good, good father. Oh, man, he's good. Church, I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Before we dismiss, I want to give an opportunity for every single one of us to open our hearts. And you know how you come to your father in heaven? You come to exactly the way you are. You don't fix yourself up. You don't have to comb your hair, brush your teeth, fixes. Fix your marriage. Right? Put on some cologne. God says, look, let me tell you about me. I'm love. I'm a good, good, good father. And I love you. I love you in your worst condition, so you'll never doubt that I love you. And if I love you in your worst condition, why would I abandon you when you become my child? I'll never do it. 
I pray that just a little bit, something happened in the spirit that introduced you to your father a little bit better, even as a seasoned believer. Like, I almost forgot that, that God is good. I've been trying to do too much. I've not been dependent on my father. I've been dependent on my abilities. I've been dependent on, my, on what I'm doing. I'm all stressed out. You know why you're all stressed out? Too much you, not enough father. I love it. God paid those bills. He's still doing it. And you know, because of that, I step out into scary places. I say, Pastor, are you always confident? No, sometimes I'm scared. You, why scared? Because I'm going places that if God don't show up, I'm going to look like a fool. Understand this. God is not in your comfort zone. He's in your vision zone. What I mean vision is what you've never done. Don't let fear freeze you. Let faith move you. And not always, you say, well, I'm still a little scared. Just because you're a little scared does not mean you don't have faith. You should be scared a little bit because the, the assignment and what God's calling you is way bigger than your ability. Thank God for your daddy's checkbook. Thank God for your daddy's power. Thank God for your daddy's wisdom. Thank, for, thank God for your daddy's support. I got this because of my daddy, not me. You serve a good, good father. It's okay. Some of you guys right now, this is your moment. You'll never have Jesus as your father until you finally say, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Connect me to the Father. I want to have a relationship with Him. You can be forgiven today. You can be set free today. This is the miracle. When you give your life to Jesus and you realize, man, I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I've had a bad, bad daddy. The devil's been my daddy. And he's got me doing some evil stuff, corrupting my marriage, corrupting my identity, corrupting my integrity. I've been doing some underhanded stuff because the devil is taking me lower than I ever thought I would go. I would say this, don't be condemned by that, but get mad about it. Condemn means, oh man, I'm a loser. You're not a loser. Get mad at it. Like, I can't believe I'm letting the devil do this in my life. I'm choosing a new father. I'm tired of that thing ruling me. The past ruling me. My lower nature ruling me. My lower desires ruling me. I'm tired of it. I need an infusion of God's spirit in me. I need a new start. Today's your day. And I will say this. How do you get to the Father? Through the Son. How do you get to the Father? It's through Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You know what that means? Reconnected to God. Lord, I want, to be, I want to be connected to you, God. I want to be connected with you. Well, you got to go through the sun. Give your life to Jesus. He died for your sins. Stop paying the price. Stop living under guilt and shame. You might have messed up, but God doesn't want to leave you there. He said, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Get up. And will you accept what he's saying about you? Son, daughter, will you reject your identity or will you accept it? is your moment. I'm going to count to three. If you're in this room and you say, Pastor, I don't know if, if God's my father. Because I've been practicing stuff that has nothing to do with the father. And God says, I know. But don't get all mad. Don't get all depressed about it. Say, okay, admit it. Admitting you're off track is the first step. Getting on track is the second step. I'm off track. I don't have the right daddy. I've allowed the enemy to rule my life. I'm tired. I want a new desire. I want new power. I want a relationship with my father. I want to place my faith in Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to be set free. Today's your day. The biggest miracle ever happened in your life, you become a son and daughter of God. You belong to the world and you belong to the devil, but you make a decision. Today, I want to give my life to God. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to have a heavenly father. When I count to three, Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be forgiven. I'm not sure if I die right now. I go to heaven. I feel like my life has been a living hell. I know I've been off track, but I want to get on track today. 
I want God to save me. I want God to make me whole. I want God's spirit to live in me. I want to become a new person. I want to get to know that Father in heaven. Start where you're at. I'm so proud of you. You're here. Start where you're at, but you got to take action. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands on this building. I want to place my faith in Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to know God as a Father. Two, when I say three, you're making a decision. God's already chosen you. Will you choose Him? Will you say yes? Son, daughter, son, daughter. And you go, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. When he calls you son, are you going to say yes or are you going to say, nah, I'll let the devil be my daddy. Today's your day. One, if you've been thinking, I don't know, today's your day. Raise your hand when I say three. One, this is your, you're, you're saying, Jesus, I want God to be my father. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Say, I want God to be my father. I see, I see the hand there. I see the hand way in the back over there. Proud of you guys. I see the hand over here. Anybody, I see the hand over there. Anybody else over here? Come on. Come on, God, gonna be my father. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to do one big. I see that hand over here, proud of you. I want, the, I want those to raise their hands. This is the biggest day of your life. I want you to take action. Someone say, Dad, take action. Will you give me the privilege and honor to just pray with you? We're not trying to embarrass you. We're trying to help you to your next level. If you just raise your hand and you want God to be your father through faith in Jesus Christ, I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up here. You're saying, from now on, I belong to God. From now on, he's my leader. He's my father. He's my provider. He's my protector. He's my teacher. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on. Somebody needs to be up here. Nothing's going to change. The addiction doesn't change. The depression doesn't change. Come on. The life doesn't change. The relationship don't change until you choose a new father. It takes prayer. That's why we hang out and we have altar calls. We make sure people get an opportunity to connect with their loving Father. We're here interceding and praying for them. And then, and then ladies, sign up for the I mean, get, sign up for the women's conference. It's not an option. This is what we do. We have conference. We spend 48 hours every single year in the presence of God. We get our breakthrough. We get our instructions there. We show up and, and when we show up, God does the rest. So say, this is what we do. All right, let's pray. Whoa, we're going to pray right now. God hears you. God, I don't care how silly you think the prayer is. God says, I don't even care if you're babbling. I get it. I love you. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, say Jesus, I know. I'm a sinner. I've done it my way. I've followed the evil instructions of the devil in my life. And I ask you now to forgive me. I believe Jesus, you paid the price. You suffered and died 
for all the wrong I've done, all the sins I've committed. But I also believe you rose from the dead. You conquered my greatest enemy, which is sin and death. Forgive me. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person with new desires. Jesus, you're my Lord. And I have a Father in heaven that loves me. And I am a child of God. From this day forward, I will follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand, church. Then make sure you show up this Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. Sign up for the Barack concert. If you want to see me preach in Spanish, it's going to be a trip. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'd love to see you there. God bless you guys. We love you. Remember this, if God's for you, if your daddy's for you, who can come against you? I need some prayer up here. I need some other leaders up here.